Hey everyone, welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. Hey guys, it's Wednesday evening here. I'm coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, my name is Tracy and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. You are on the Facebook page of Dixie Bell Paint Company. It is their main page where we go live constantly during the week, um, all, every day of the week, showing you ways that you can use some, a lot, one, multiple of their products. Every single brand ambassador, content creator, retailer comes to you live right here and shares with you what our favorite projects are, our favorite products are, um, and easy ways that you can get your hands on some paint and make something beautiful and create, create, create. Hello, thank you for saying hello, Kimberly. Hi, Nina. Hi, Debbie and Laura and Joseph. Hi, Matt. He's not with us tonight, but he just came out here. Um, do what? They cannot see you. Anyway, guys, thank you. Hi, Aviance. Hello, Teresa. Thank you so much for saying hello, y'all. Please do say hello. Tell us where you're tuning in from. Dixie Bell Paint is live with me. They will be here manning the comments and answering any questions that I might miss. And uh, they really, really, it is really important to let us know where you're tuning in from and if we can help you in any way with any paint questions that you might have, uh, any questions about the product, you can buy Dixie Bell paint online. You can buy Dixie Bell paint from your retailer. You can go to the Dixie Bell shop in Florida if you want where they make the paint and you can buy paint there. Hi, Cecilia. Um, oh, what did I just see that Aviance said? I got a booth today. Oh, that's a huge, huge move, girl. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for you. Um, Aviance has been a viewer of mine for a long time. We've never met in person. I am so excited for you, girl. I really, really am. Celebrate that win, hun. Good for you. In these crazy times, it's, it's fun to just, you know, just jump. Just give it a try. Something to distract you and get your eyes off something and make something happen for yourself. So good for you. Dixie Bell is a fabulous company to work with. I love working for them. Hi, Cecilia. Um... Let's see here. Sharon, hi girl. Hi, Ann. So listen, and you'll be teaching classes. That's awesome. I love teaching so much, which is why I'm here. That's why I'm here tonight. Hello, Diana from Rockport. Guys, listen, tonight I'm going to talk to y'all about, um, okay, first of all, do you see? So I just posted that tonight. We started that together last week, right there. We started that piece together. That is that piece that we talked about doing the stencil houndstooth on the front. And we did it the Christmas screen. Y'all helped me with that. It was a lot of fun. And I love how it turned out. We started it last Wednesday. And I've, I had a crazy busy week, but I was still able to finish it. And you guys can finish projects quickly too. They don't take forever. If you just focus, figure out what your design is, open that, that paint, dip your brush in, and start painting. It's the best way to get things done. Um, Nina, what were you saying here? Let's see. Nina, I will be helping teach next Thursday. <gasps> you are, Nina? Oh, my gosh. That is so awesome. You guys are growing. Everybody's growing. Thank you, Wendy. I love it. I really, really love it. It's available. Please message me if you're interested in it. I ship, <clears throat> excuse me, I ship nationwide. Um, I put the measurements on my post. If you have any questions at all, just shoot me a message. Let me know. I can go back and look in comments as well, okay? Um, thank you, Diana. This piece, you cannot see the front of this. So this is what we're going to start tonight. And I know that we talk a lot about design when I'm painting with you guys, and we are going to do some more of that tonight. But I feel like it's super important because pieces like this will be sitting around your home or sitting in your garage or in your warehouse, or maybe your mom or your dad has them or your grandma. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous desk. I know you can't see the whole thing. It is a French provincial desk. Um, it is... I call it a women's desk, a woman's desk. Um, it's, it's an executive desk, but it's a woman's size executive desk. It's not like the big bulky man's desk, but it is, um, you can see here, let me take you down a little bit and turn you, see the pretty legs on it. And it takes, I don't know how long it is exactly, but it's a good size. It's bigger than the chest that I painted last week. Um, so all I've done so far, it, it is your typical French provincial brown wood piece of furniture. So all I've done so far is I've put two coats of Boss Primer on it. I use Boss White and I've done two coats. I put a coat on, I let it dry about an hour. I put another coat on, it's been drying for a few hours and it's ready for me to paint. So we're going to start painting on it tonight. So I want to talk to you about 
How do you decide what you're gonna do? So you've got the piece of furniture, it's available to you. How, how do you know what you wanna do? Well, you've gotta, you've gotta get some ideas from somewhere. You go to Pinterest, uh, you watch us talk right here on uh, Dixie Bell Paints page. We're posting stuff constantly. You've got your, your people that you like to follow. Uh, find someone that inspires you. Find someone, hmm, I don't know who that could be. <laughs> There's many of us. Find someone who speaks your language. If you love color and you love uh, black and white, maybe you're following me or maybe you're following Leah. If you love boho, maybe you're following Cristana or maybe you're following Leah. If you like clean and romantic look, maybe you're following Brandy and maybe you're following Amy. Maybe you're following all of us. If you like super grunge, maybe you're following me or Malia. Uh, if you like super elaborate and rich, maybe you're following Bianca. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Um, it is find someone who speaks your language and that makes you want to try something, all right? So that's step one. The next step is try to wrap your head around a design that you want to do on that piece, not the color. A lot of people are like, well, I, here's the piece, but I don't know what color I want to paint it. No, let's start with maybe what do you want to do to that piece? What do you want to do to that piece? Um, do you want to paint it all one color? All right, great. If you know that you want to paint it all one color, then you can go to the next question, which is color, all right? But what if you don't want to paint it all one color? What if you want to paint it all one color and you want it to be grunged out so you know you're going to need black wax or brown wax or some Dixie dirt? Or maybe you want to go super boho and you want to add some sea spray to it and make it chippy or shabby chic and make it chippy. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what your ideas are. Maybe you want to do stripes or checks or houndstooth. Um, kind of wrap your idea around what you want to do. And then once you have your idea, an idea about it, um, do you want to add molds to it? Do you want to stencil on it? Do you want to do some raised stencil? What do you, what do you want to do? So once you have an idea, it doesn't have to be hard, hardcore because once you get started, you sometimes will very often change direction. But I can tell you first and foremost, you usually want to prime your piece. I know that we preach all the time that Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint, this is fluff right here. This is my favorite white. This is fluff. This is what the jars look like. This is a 16 ounce jar. They come in eight ounce, 16 ounce, and 32 ounce. So this is a 16 ounce jar. This is fluff. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, uh, unless you have a lot of uh, experience in painting, Chalk, with chalk mineral paint. Unless you have a lot of experience painting with it, you really don't know for sure if you're gonna have any type of bleed through, which is um, some uh, pigment that gets pulled from the natural wood through the paint out to the surface. And it can happen when you put your top coat on it. Uh, and sometimes you won't see it until you put your top coat on it. So you don't know it's there. So you've spent all your time doing something like that piece. And then you are like, it's perfect. And then you open your top coat and you put your first layer on and it starts turning weird colors. And you're like, what the heck? What the heck? What? I just spent all that time. Hi, Nancy. Hi there. So it is just, hi, Audrey. If you have any doubt at all, or you don't have a clue, then I suggest that you prime, all right? So, first step, prime. And a lot of times, I just I just prime. I just out of habit of prime. It just makes me feel better. It makes me feel safer about what I'm gonna do, and especially if I'm gonna have a lot of detail on my piece, okay? So, uh, do me a favor, you guys. Um, now that y'all all said hello, everybody said hello. Hi, Cindy, and hi, Sandy. If you guys will also hit that share button, it really helps get the message out. It helps us to spread it out to more people so that if someone's sitting around or they're like, hmm, I wonder if Tracy's live, or I wonder if Dixie Bell's got something good going on right now, or I really feel like painting, they'll know that we're live, and um, we would really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, so anyway, two coats of Boss. This is Boss right here. Boss is amazing because it will keep that disaster that I just talked to you about from happening. So this is Boss blocks odors, stops smells, and and bleed through right here. Actually, it says blocks odors, stops stains. Oh my gosh, blocks! I can't ever remember it, how to say it in the order in the order, but it's blocks odors, stains, stops bleed through. I don't know why I don't have that memorized after three years. You would think I would have it memorized in that order. So anyway, um, this is Dixie Bell Boss. 
Uh, it comes in clear and it comes in white. I used white because I'm gonna be actually painting white next. Thank you, Nina, you're so, I can always count on you for that. Thank you, Brandy, you too. I appreciate that very, very, very much. Um, it really does help. It is super helpful. Uh, right here, Julie, right here. This is my primer, it's called Boss. So my paint is white, but my primer is white also. But I could have primed in clear, and they're also gonna be coming out with um, a gray primer as well. So, uh, but that's not out and that's not available yet. But this is the white. That's what I've done right here, two coats. So I don't have to worry about a stain coming through. I don't have to worry about a smell. I don't have to worry about cigarette smoke or, you know, just that just that smell that comes from someone else's house that you don't want in, in your furniture when you open the drawer. Um, that This will help stop odors as well. Uh, Nina says, always prime, the paint goes on so much smoother. I mean, she kind of does have a point. It kind of does a little bit. You don't have to prime, but if you want to be safe, it's really helpful. Um, so that's that. I put this on easy, 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 easy to prime. Two coats, like I said, that's what it looks like right here. I primed with one coat. I waited about an hour. I came back, I put my second coat on and it's been sitting here a couple of hours until we go live. So I'm gonna tell y'all that I'm gonna use a fluff right now and then we're gonna talk design. Okay, so just like I preached to you, Kathleen, you know what? I have never ever, yeah, old funk smell, Nina, you're right. Kathleen, that's such a good question. Uh, can you spray Boss? Yes, you can spray Boss. I don't believe that Boss needs any ratio breakdown at all. In fact, I wouldn't do that. I would not I would not uh, water it down. Boss, I think, needs to be kept in its entirety so that you don't uh, mess with its efficacy. Is that the right word? I love to say that word. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to say that word. It's efficacy. Uh, yes, you can spray Boss. Absolutely, you can. I don't think that it's pretty thin. It's much thinner than the paint. It's it's actually thin. So it's not like water thin, but i um, wondering, does the adhesive pull the paint? Okay, so let me go back to Kathy's question and Alicia talking. I've never used adhesive sprays when I use uh, stencils. First of all, I... I'm not like a huge stencil user, um, but I, you know, I do a lot of hand painted art on my pieces, a lot of freehand, and I hadn't used a lot of stencils, um, but they kind of circle back around. I have tons of them. I've used tons over the last 12 years, but uh, they're kind of circling back around and I love this hound's tooth, so I went for it. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use this spray adhesive. So I just used like a, I think it was, let me grab it. I think it was like by Elmer's, hold on. Yeah, yeah, it was by Elmer's. I just had it here um, for one of my one of my online classes. Um, we used it with glitter, so it's just an Elmer's spray adhesive. And I did. I sprayed, laid down a cardboard box, and I put my stencil down, and I sprayed the back side of it and on the cardboard box. Now the trick is. To me, the trick is uh, not to put it right on. Don't spray and then put it right on your piece because it's going to want to glue onto your piece. So. To be safe, um, you spray it on your stencil and you let it sit for about two to three minutes, five minutes, whatever. Let it tack up. Let it get sticky on its own. Then put it on your piece and it doesn't like go to your piece. It's sticky, but it's just enough. It started to set just enough that it's not gonna stick on there. And then when it just pulled right off, did not touch my paint and it was fresh. It was fresh paint, like barely dry. So that's a very good question. That's what I used, um, worked great. My outfit is spot on. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's, you like my little crushed velvet jogging pants. Um, you can use Gator Hide if you need a really durable water repellent finish or we all, oh, is someone asking about a top coat? That right there is Gator Hide. Um, I used two coats of Gator Hide on that. It is beautiful. If you go back and look at my post today, you can zoom in and see it's got a gorgeous shine. I like a shine. I like a shine on my finish. Not like some pieces super high gloss and I contemplated doing that that green, that is tree frog green. I contemplated doing it, doing it in a high gloss, but instead I went with Gator Hide. It gives a gorgeous shine. It went right over my gemstone mousse. I had done my gemstone mousse, let it dry overnight. It put to put right over the top of that. It's water repellent, um, but the other top coats are also very durable and uh, they come in flat, 
which is super user-friendly because you put it on and you can't even tell it's there. Um, not near as durable, it's less durable. The more shine they get, the more machine they get, the more durable they become. So there's flat, then there is um, satin, which is also very user-friendly, very, very user-friendly. The only thing about satin top coat is it's kind of creamy looking. So people think that it's white and going on like cream, but it dries clear, promise, promise. I love that it's creamy. I love that it doesn't run. And then there is gloss, which I love their gloss as well, but that's got gator hide on it. Okay, so back to this piece right here. So let's talk design real quick. I know, I told y'all, you need to kind of have your idea around a design. I knew, I've been, I have a piece of paper that I want to decoupage onto this desk. Um, I'm not gonna show y'all, it's a surprise, uh, but I've had it for a while and I knew, that I was going to want to use it on something that was flat. I didn't want to have to go over door drawers, which by the way, on the front side, that's where the drawers are. But you know, these desks, most people put these in the middle of a room, these executive women's desks, they sit, they float in the middle of a room. I love room design, by the way. So they float in the middle of a room. And when people walk in, you just, you know, you're sitting at your desk and you look up and you're like, hello, they can see the front of your desk, right? They can see the whole front of it. So this I love doing desks like this because this is a super flat, huge, open blank canvas. So I'm actually going to be decoupaging a piece of paper on here um, so that you can't see the piece of paper. I made a fake piece of paper in the exact same size. So I used wrapping paper and you can do this too, guys. Y'all can do this too if you just didn't want to decoupage your paper on there just yet. Just make yourself a template. I did that. I cut it to size, and I know for a fact that it's going to be right here in the middle, about this big, just like this. And then it's going to have stripes on each side. So I went ahead and marked where I want my stripes to be, so I already know that. So that means, really, I don't have to paint back here if I don't want to waste paint. If I don't, if I don't want to waste paint, mark out where you don't need to be putting the paint. You've got your primer back there already. I could decoupage straight over the, the primer, um, but instead I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing. I just like to. Now, something else that I want to give you a little bit of a tip, and I'm going to talk about this when I start putting my fluff on right now. Um, two things. One is if you are struggling with a piece of furniture, I put satin clear cut on first and let it dry and then put the gator hide on no streaks. Oh, right. Yes. That's a little, that's a little pro tip that we share a lot. And, um, I don't do that. Sometimes I do, but very, very rarely. I mean, once out of every 10 times probably. But it is helpful if you are ever struggling with gator hide because gator hide has a little bit of a learning curve to it. It sets up quickly and it's thick. Um, so if that's the case, if you put a, a, a friendly coat of satin on, um, then the gator hide goes on a little bit easier. That is a good pro tip. This is my Dixie Belle brush. They don't have any in stock right now, but this is my synthetic Dixie Belle brush. I love it. This one right here is my flat medium. It's my favorite brush. This is my flat medium. So this is my fluff paint, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all these uh, two things I wanna talk to y'all about while I start putting this on. So you can see the difference here between fluff and boss white, which boss white is actually very, very close to the color cotton. That's the other white that Dixie Belle has to offer. And uh, cotton is a real, I call it a clinical white. It's a really hard, crisp white. Um, and fluff has a little bit of a gray undertone. It's not gray, don't get me wrong. Do not buy fluff and think that you're getting gray. It's not, it's just, it, to me it's more, I mean, it's called fluff. It reminds me of marshmallow. So um, anyway, you can see the difference between the two whites. This is just softer, a little bit easier on the eyes. Uh, so what I wanted to tell you is if you're really struggling with the piece of furniture that you're going to paint, um, put some primer on it or at least paint it in one solid coat. If you don't know what direction you're going to go, paint it in a pale gray or paint it in a white or put your primer on there. It really does help to take away the wood tone if you know you're not going with any type of wood tone at all. Sometimes it just helps to get that uh, surface painted get the wood gone and you can see it better you can see i i really feel like it helps you to uh, visualize where you might want to go so let me give you this other little tip here so that's the first tip and that is just put some paint on it or prime it and i bet you will uh, have a better vision 
Okay, so the second thing I wanna tell you is, uh, this is the way I paint long surfaces. I started, I actually started over there because I was talking to y'all, but usually, and I've shared this before, I usually start in the middle. I do a little bit in the middle, a little bit on the side, and a little bit on this side. I break it up into like three sections, middle, left, and right. And then I start on the left and I go all the way over and all the way back, all the way over, just like that. Make sure that your strokes are long and even. Now, you don't have to paint long, even strokes, or you can paint just like this. You can paint in a bunch of different directions if you want. Let's say I'm gonna do that all across the piece. Can y'all see me over here too? So say I'm gonna do that, and sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes if there's a lot of wood grain, sometimes it's helpful to go in different directions. I don't paint like that. I'd probably have carpal tunnel like by tomorrow evening if I did that. It's kind of all over the place, but I see people that do, and that's okay. I, I know why they're doing it. Either they don't, either one thing, they don't know what they're doing at all, or they do know what they're doing and they're getting into the crevices. But then, unless you're trying to really texturize a piece, then you need to go back and go left to right and smooth them out. Now, oftentimes you will see a lot of us paint with water. Well, I don't use, like to use a lot of water. I don't like to miss with a lot of water when I'm painting with white. For one thing, it's hard enough to get good coverage with white and then you wanna add water on top of it and it's just not necessary. Dixie Belle has amazing coverage. A lot of times you can get good coverage in one coat. As a matter of fact, with this, I am only gonna do one coat because I've already got two coats of White Boss Primer on there. And I'm also gonna be striping over it as well. So uh, I am only gonna do one coat. So there you go, I did middle, right, left. Now I'm going back and forth and I'm almost done with this right here. And I'm using flat medium, which is a smaller surface brush. If you wanted to use a larger brush, this is the flat large. You can see the difference in the two sizes. This one covers a lot more you know, surface space, uh, which means you get your job done faster if you wanna use a bigger brush. I just, it's kind of heavy for me. My little hands, I, have, I am not a little person, but I have little bitty hands, uh, like little bitty. Like my, my wedding ring finger is a four. So I just have little little hands and little fingers and I need smaller brushes. Like I love the mini brush and I love the flat medium. So that brush is a little big for me. I like to use the flat large to do top coats. Um, there we go. So that is coated. Um, it feels like there was one other thing I wanted to tell you um, that was a tip besides Priming, just get some paint on there. Just get some paint on your piece. It will help you visualize what you want to do. You don't have, people get all caught up. Oh my gosh, I have, sorry, I my, every time I turn these lights on, it makes my eyes hurt. Um, people say, I've, ha I've got my grandmother's night scene and I just, I don't know, what color should I paint this? And they post it in these groups. Y'all post them in the groups. What color should I paint this? Well, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. I don't know what the inside of your house looks like. I don't know if you're going to sell it. I don't know what bedroom it's going in. I don't know if you have kids or dogs. I don't know. I don't know. But you know what I can tell you is just pick a color and put it on there. But go light. If you are unsure, go light. Go like with a pale gray or a white. Something very, uh, you know, neutral. Get it on there. Once that wood's covered up, you're like, oh, I can start to see a little bit better. And, and it, you know, it helps. Um, you are so welcome for the painting tip on the strokes. Um, that, here's my Mr. Bottle that one of my lovely viewers mailed to me. Uh, what lightning do you use? What lightning? Oh, lighting. I was like, lightning? Oh, lighting. Um, I have ring lights. I have ring lights. I use ring lights. I have three ring lights on right now. The more light, the better, right? The better to see you with, said the big bad wolf. Okay, so that was the first tip. Uh, I felt like there was something else that I really, really wanted to make sure I told you and I can't remember what it was. Um, so I'm really, I'm gonna try something new. Um, I can't do it on here with you guys because the paint won't dry in time for me to start doing it, but I'll show you real quick, or I'll kind of give you a little bit of a visual of what I want to do. Uh, it's a design I've never done before. It's a little bit of a, kind of a little bit of a funky modern twist um, on stripes. Uh, 
And don't ask me how I, how I, how I was inspired. I mean, first of all, the piece, I love the piece, the paper that I'm going to do, um, has black and white stripes on it. So I, I just didn't want to continue with that. I wanted to do something kind of different. So if the piece is right here and it has black and white stripes in it, instead of taking the stripes around, I'm thinking about kind of basket weaving my stripes somehow. I'm thinking about like opening them up and having some be underneath, like kind of do like a three dimensional stripe thing. Does that make sense to y'all? I, I, I don't quite have it in my head. Uh, Amazon, y'all are talking, are you asking if I got my lights on Amazon? I did, and I have an Amazon store that I would be glad to send you the link to, and I have going live essentials in there. So I have like my tripod and a, my lights and all that kind of stuff, so. Um, good evening from Hope, Arkansas, Mitty. I love your name, Mitty, first of all, and I love the name Hope, Arkansas. Um, so what do y'all think? No one said anything. Oh, oh, like my laundry room. Well, Aviance, that is just like over and then down and then continue over. So nothing crossed, like nothing, it all stayed fluid. Do you know what I mean? I'm thinking about having, you know, if stripes are like this, having like some open and then cross over some this direction. I'm not like, like someone pulled them open kind of, kind of give it a dimension. You can see that, Mitty? Okay, I, I, I haven't drawn it. I haven't drawn it out, which I probably should, but I probably won't because that's just the way I roll. Um, but I thought it would kind of, I'd let y'all in my head a little bit uh, because I like to do that and fly by the seat of our pants. Kind of, Nina, but not like in a pattern. Yeah, Wendy, not, not lat like lattice, but not really just like it's been opened up. I'm have new light. You're going to get Kathleen. You're getting new lights for Christmas Celtic. Um, that's the design, right? That where they almost, it almost looks like a knot of some sort. Okay. So y'all stay tuned. All right. Because I don't know. I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to do my best of my, and I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you, yeah, like a loose braid. Not really, not really. It's going to be more, uh, I will tape it off, Sandy. Good question. I will tape it off. So if this piece is here and how many stripes do I have here to work with? So I have one, two, three, okay, up here. Those are the spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stripes. So I'm kind of thinking, Maybe I'll leave two, oh my gosh, I don't know, and open one up and then back over. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I think the next thing I will do is put my paper on. I think I will, at this point, put my paper on, and then I'm going to go from there. I'm going to get real busy with a ruler and a pencil and a, some tape, and I'm going to be prepared to laugh at myself a lot. I will laugh at myself a lot, and I will not do it on live video. <laughs> Jane, you think you have the same desk? I'm sure you do. I've done so many of this desk. I love it. I love it. It's got on the other side, you know, the center drawer. And then I think it has three drawers on each side. Love it. And I also love that when you do the desk, you can always do something different on the knee hole. Is that what it's called? The knee hole? I love that. Um, who was just saying? Michelle was just saying, hi, hun. Hi, honey. Who? I am hot. These lights get hot. Are you going, I'm not, Aviance. I'm not gonna go live tonight. I was, um, I didn't sleep very much last night, so I was just like pushing through, um, but I'm not gonna go live tonight on my page. I know, but you're not gonna miss anything because I'm shutting down. I'm not gonna do it. I'll probably finish the white coat. I have already primed both sides of the desk, but I have not cleaned up and go to bed. And see, the good Lord's telling me right now we gotta close down because we just glitched in our internet. So it's super simple, you guys. Dixie Bell's easy paint to use. All you have to do, just try to think about your design. Find someone who inspires you. Find that piece that just needs some love and get yourself a color and just put some paint on it and start there. Start there and see what happens after that. Spaghetti bowl, I like that, Yvonne. Kinda like a spaghetti bowl. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate you guys so much. Dixie Bell, thank you for having me tonight. Like I said, if anyone has any questions, just message us, leave a comment. We will get back with you. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday night, and I will see y'all next week. Hang in there. We'll see where I am on this piece. I can't, I don't, I have no idea where I'll be at that point. Maybe I'll finish it like I did that one, or maybe we'll be here undoing the spaghetti bowl. Okay. Love you guys. We'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.